Okay, TDD, um, Test Driven Development. Um, so how many people have heard of it before? Right. So, so um, TDD, in, in, in my day-to-day -day work in ThoughtWorks, we, we use TDD every day. Um, to my, like with my experience, I think it's a very good engineering practice for, for coding and development. So yeah, I'd like to share something about uh, test-driven development. So before that, let's talk about testing. Um, why testing? Well, a lot of reasons listed here. Uh, so by testing, we can verify like functionalities of your application. You know what, what your app is doing. And uh, catch bugs and uh, uh, pro prevent them from coming back. Uh, also serves as a documentation for, um, for your maintenance process, for example, if uh, you have like tests written well, then for example, later you, you left the project or you are not working on this piece of code anymore. Other people can uh, know what, what the functionality is based on the, te based on the testing. Um, so, okay, testing is a very, very big, very general concept. How do we make sure, there, there's a, a few points that may like people may, cons may concern about. The so firstly is the code coverage and uh, how people are confident about all the sc scenarios are covered and the prevent bugs. How, how, how does testing do it? And the answer is uh, TDD. So this is where, the, where TDD comes into the picture. Uh, let me talk about more uh, uh, details about it. So firstly, what is TDD? Test-driven development meaning uh, so there are three stages. As I don't know whether you have saw the picture that I used for for today's workshop. Uh, it's red, red, green refactor. So three phases: uh, uh, red, which is the first one, writing test before writing your code. So you write the test, then it fails. That's the right part. And uh, uh, red, when 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 after it fails you write the minimum amount of code necessary to make the test that you write to pass. That's the green phase. Then continuously refactor your code, make sure that uh, your, your existing code pass all the te test cases. Um, and why we should do it? So back to the previous post questions that we had just now, uh, the three things, co code coverage, scenario, scenario and the cases covered, and the bug prevention. Let's look at the first, uh, the first question first, the, the code coverage. So before writing the, before writing the code, before the implementation, you have the test cases. This ensures all the code covered by your test. For example, uh, you don't have any code written for your functionality yet, and you write a test, test code, uh, t t test cases for the code and then you implement. You will know exactly this piece of uh, implementation is making the test pass. So this is ensuring all, like the, the, all the written code are tested like even before they're, they're written. So usually TDD, uh, with, without consciously uh, uh, checking the test coverage, it's usually have a very high test coverage. And uh, the second question, scenario covered. So, um, be, so how, how TDD works is usually you think about what your application, what your program is doing, and uh, you have all the scenarios. Uh, because you have to write it in the test first, so you know exactly what it's doing. So it's visible list of functionalities and easy to see which cases, which cases are missing. In a way that uh, test, uh, Unit tests make, make you, um, force you to think about all the edge, edge cases of the program. And uh, the last question, bug prevention. So when you are writing a test-driven development, when you are coming up with all those unit tests, you are probably thinking about like what are the edge cases like the non-check non or undefined value check, uh, then you can, you, then, then you, when you are implementing, you are making all those edge cases pass. Uh, and also, for my 
like uh, personal experience. I'm I like TDD. One of the most most important reasons are because we continuously re refactor our code to make it in a better structure. And with the uh, with with all the test cases, I'm very confident to refactor the existing code. Um, I can rewrite piece of code without uh, breaking the functionality. That's uh, very important. Uh huh. And so, how should the code be used? And uh, only write necessary code. This so um, this helps with your design. Bef like like what I said before. Before your implementation, you know what exactly you are going to write for your program. And the Yagni, who knows what's the true version of Yagni? It's uh, you are not, you are gonna, you're 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 not you're not gonna need it. It's, uh, yeah. You're not. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So so basically, you you just have the like minimum amount of code. You don't have extra uh, code like nobody cares about lying in your source code somewhere, and it will be become pro uh, become problem later uh, in the project. So this makes the code very clean and very lean. It's only stick to your test cases. Uh, yeah, so how we do that? Um, red, green, refactor. Red is when you write test case before implementation, it's going to fail because, yeah, obviously, you, you don't have implementation. And then you implement for the test case that you write to make sure this piece of code is tested and is doing what it's doing. And then continuously uh, refactor the code and um, yeah, make better quality of the code. Okay, now let's go to the workshop part. Let's get our hands dirty. Uh, I have a, okay, I have a repository um, for everyone to to clone, we can start from there. This is the link. Uh, let me just paste it here. Yeah. Uh, th this is one branch of it. There are two branches on this repo. <coughs> one is the master branch is uh, with full uh, solution and uh, this is the bare bone code that to start with. Can clone this by uh, doing. Okay, yeah, I have something here. Git clone. Yeah, you can specify the branch practice. Uh, git clone uh, dash b practice with the with the link. Has everyone cloned the um, the repo? Okay, so um, after cloning the practice branch, the, the project looks something like this. It has one main file which called uh, here stream mummify.js and uh, a test 
test file in the test folder called the stream mummify spec. And before that, uh, let me uh, show you how, what we are going to do for today's practice. So we are going to uh, write a function, like very, very simple. We're just going to write one function to mummify string. Maybe you have heard of this uh, problem already. Uh, OK, uh, back there, everyone got the REPL? Yeah? Good? All right. Oh, the Wi-Fi password is, so there is a QR code there. You can scan that. Or the right text on it is the, is the password. It's five words. It's pretty long. Sorry about that. Uh, let me just uh, get the password here. The Wi-Fi network name is TW Guest, and uh, the password is Crimson space T R O U T space rewrite space trustable space I V Y. Yeah, this is the password with space in between. Yeah, l let me know if you have like any problem be in the middle of the workshop. Um, All right, so back to the problem. So the input of this function is uh, a string. And um, the string is of like different lengths, but it's, uh, so OK, it, it, it's a combination of vowels and uh, um, uh, other letters or other characters. If the vowels are more than 30% of the string length, then you insert mummy for each continuous set of vowels. Here is some example. So his um, is one third, which is like um, uh, around 33% of the length of the string. Then you replace, uh, replace the vowel with mummy. This word is mummy fed as. Um, like H mummy S. And uh, the second example is here. So if you have like continuous vowels uh, in the middle of the word, um, for example, in this case, it's 50% for the length. Uh, you replace the continuous vowels with one mummy, not, not two, not the, yeah, as demonstrated in the third one. Uh, so the input is a string, the output is a mummy face string. So yeah, the function is as simple as that. Um, we have a, so like, uh, can anyone think about like, if given this, uh, given this requirement, w which will be the first test case, first unit test that you, you think you are going to write? Yeah, anything, just like, you can just speak out, it's fine. Okay, um, yeah, so the f I have like several scenarios here. Um, the, imp the important point of writing, of practicing TDD is the test case must be unit, so it covers um, the features, like the, the, the atomic features of your application. So when you try to debug or you uh, try to use the TDD code as a documentation, you will know like which part is it. And it's like, because the unit test is going to cover just one single functionality, so it's easy to debug to. So the, the first test case will be, if I gave it an empty string, I'm expecting this function to return me in an empty string. All right. And the, the second, OK, let's, let's start with the first one. Uh, let's switch back to the 
Rapol, the dummy Rapol. So uh, it's a node project. Um, if you have node and npm installed, you can just do npm uh, install in the in the project folder. Then the uh, relevant packages uh, specified in package.json will be installed. So you don't need to worry about the testing framework. Um, today's testing framework I'm going to use is uh, chai, is, uh, chai um, and um, here. So everything is specified here. Yeah, I'm going to use um, Mocha and Chai. Mocha is the test runner and Chai is the testing, is the uh, assertion framework. But the, all this you don't need to worry about. The, today is more about the concept of TDD rather than the tool that you're going to use. The con concept can be used like on all different uh, programming languages, even Java, C++, and I'm just using Node and the JavaScript as example. So if you do this, I should install the relevant packages. All right. Mm. Yeah, and the syntax for Mocha is quite straightforward. So for example, here I have a describe. Describe is basically just to group a list of unit tests together uh, in case that they, sh they share some <coughs> common function, uh, common features. For example, uh, I'm going to just test the, func the function mummify in, in this file. So I'm going to have a describe uh, to include all the mummify related test cases here. And the eight is the keyword to start with the unit test, like which exactly, <coughs> which, which test exactly you are going to write. And uh, the, first, the first test case, as I demonstrated just now, I'm giving it an empty string. I'm expecting it, it to return me an empty string. So if you, in the terminal, if you type, Yarn test. It should start the Mocha runner to run the test. It's uh, all configured in package.json. Um, ever already configured it, so you just need to run this. It, it should be all right. Uh -huh. Okay, so for now, because we don't have any expectation, we don't have any assertion yet, it's just giving me, if you look at the console, it's just saying mummify, then something passed, because we don't have expectation, so everything is going to pass now. And um, I'm going to write my first test case, which is expecting the string to be, to be an empty string. The syntax for chai is expect, and uh, I am imported mummify. I'm giving it an empty string. JavaScript, you can give single code or double code, doesn't really matter. To equal to be. And this is the red face for the first test case. <coughs> so it's saying that mummify should uh, should not mummify empty string. 
And the assertion error is saying that uh, expecting undefined to equal empty string. And uh, yeah, then after that, we go back, we go to the green phase, which is the implementation. Um, yeah, I'm not going to show the answer first. S uh, you can implement yourself in this function defined in string mummify.js just to make that to make the minimum change to make that uh, test pass. And also, if you really want to refer to the solution, you can just uh, git checkout master it will be all there. So I mentioned uh, I mentioned something in the presentation saying that your test can be a documentation. As for example, this case, it's very uh, clear that your mummify should or should not do something. So yeah, this is an example of how your uh, test cases serves as documentation. Anyone want to share? Anyone want to share the the answer? It's really simple. It's a well, just one line change. <coughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, how? Oh, I just yeah. right. You yeah. want to share? That you, you want to share this? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Sorry, your name is. Uh, Kayok. Kayok. Yeah. Okay. You want you want to just use my laptop just to show there. Come. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can go with the next one too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Kayok here is going to give the answer <coughs> to the first test case. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is what I'm saying. Make the minimum change to make the test case pass. Um, and uh, here, let me run again. Yarn. <laughs> well. Ah, wrong. Sorry. Um, why am I? Wait. Wait, uh, one sec. I'm not sure what, why my console is not giving color. Uh, yeah, the text is gone. I 
is now showing. Okay. Right, so this is a green face. <coughs> the minimum code to make the uh, test case pass is only to return an empty string. All right, and then we, co we continue with the next test case. To give it a, give it a, a STR, return a STR, because there's no vowel in the middle of it, so it's not going to be mummified. And um, who wants to try to write the test case? I can start the, fr the, the, the bare bone here. Hey. Should not mummify. There's no. Wow, wow, wow. We all. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, so who wants to, who wants to uh, implement the test case? Hands up. <laughs> Anyone want to try? Just come here and like demonstrate what you want to write. Or I can do it. I'm, I, I don't mind to do it. <laughs> it's too easy, right? <laughs> So this will be the test case. If you run it, yeah, it's failing. So you're expecting a string, which is a STR, but it's returning the empty string because your implementation here is to return an empty string. And now you have to make the implementation and make sure that two of the test cases, both of them are passing. I, I put the test case here, and um, you can do the implementation. Leanne is going to share her solution about the second test case. Yeah, anyone? OK, I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do it, I do it. So yeah, so in the implementation, she just changed the empty string to the word. So what's in, what's out? Um, and if we run the test again, yeah, both are passing. Um, of course, this is not like this is not the fellow f final solution that we are going to have for the mummify function. So like in this manner. We uh, write the test case first and write the implementation or refactor your current implementation just to make sure that all the, past, all the test cases are passing. Uh, I will, okay, I'm gonna put all the scenarios like for this workshop here and you can start to write the test cases and implement by yourself one by one from here. Um, yeah, and uh, do let me know if like there is any problem with the syntax or no JS package uh, problem or Git problem, anything travel. Um, yeah, so the test, uh, third test cases will be a single vowel. Just to uh, clarify a little bit about the structure here. So this stream mummify is actually the, the file for your uh, implementation for the function. Um, and this stream mummify spec, which is a convention in, in, uh, Java, in Java, some Java 3 framework to say that this is the specifications for this implementation 
meaning this is the test, test case files for this implementation. Um, and there is some, uh, something handy that you can do for the test case is uh, in, the, in, the, in the Mocha framework. For example, you have this second, um, you have two test cases, and your implementation may be something like that. And um, it's, it's failing. Right, and there are, there are two test cases here. The first one is passing, the second one is failing. And you want to get rid of some of the noise, you can just focus on the failing one uh, first. So you can do 8.only. It will run only the second test case. Yeah, so if you see here, it saying zero passing one filling and the filling one is the one that you want to focus on. And uh, this is to y include some of the test cases. And uh, there is another uh, keyword called x. You put x uh, before eight. It means exclude this test case. So if you do this, um, when you do a um, NPM test, it will only run the first one. The second one is excluded and is ignored. So no matter what you are expecting, the second test is doing is not going to give you anything uh, useful. Yeah. This is helpful when you have like a um, hundred of test test cases and you don't want to run everything again and again. You just focus on one or two test cases that you want to make it pass. All right, um, so who wants to give the solution for the third test cases? Uh, for the third test case, sorry. Okay. Right. Yeah. I I try. Okay. So for the third one, my test case will be firstly have the description about what the test case is going to do. Um. It. So the th third one is to change a single vowel to mummify. So should mummify if um, passing a single vowel letter. And I'm expecting that if I give it a single vowel, it should return me a mummify. Uh, mummify, right? Ma mummy. <coughs> and I'm going to run the test case again. My first two test cases are passing uh, because I haven't changed anything about the previous implementation. And um, <coughs> the, th the third one is failing. It's expecting mummy, but it returns A because the implementation is saying that wh wh whichever you pass in, I will just um, return, return it. So, A. Yeah. Um, who want to share the implementation part?
Right, so if you're thinking about checking whether a letter is um, like a E I O U, in JavaScript, there's an easy way to do that rather than um, regex. <laughs> so, you, for example, I'm just using a console to show this. Uh, I have a variable called vowels, which is the same as what's in the code, um, like saying it's a string A E I O U. And, uh, index of is returning the index of certain letters in this case in, in the string. Uh, so if you want to check whether a, le whether a char is in a string, you can just checking whether the return value of index of is uh, greater or equal to zero. So if it's not minus one, then, then it's part of it. So if I'm typing y, that's return me minus one, which is an invalid index. So you can use this for the implementation, just in case you're not uh, familiar with the JavaScript syntax. Okay. Okay, so um, for this, for the third one, if the uh, passing argument is, is a, a single wall, we want to mummify it, right? And we don't want to break the previous two test cases. Um, this, is the word, th this is the implementation before. It's filling on the third one, passing on the previous two. Uh, the minimum code that I'm going to have to make all three test cases pass. But you can th well, you can think you can start with the third one first. They're thinking, um, make the third one pass. Uh, we don't really care about the previous two for now. I if I put a only here. But but usually, like you do care about all the test cases. So. Um, <laughs> This is just a demonstration. <coughs> um, if uh, well, dot index of um, word, then return mummy, and I'm going so yeah. So my thinking process will be, OK, I'm giving an A, and I want a mummy. So I, I'm being lazy. I'm just returning a mummy without any other ch uh, conditional checking. Um, and here, I and it's uh, right, sorry. Index of is grid. It's <laughs> Right, so my third test case is, pass is passing. Now I'm, I need to make sure that it's not breaking other test cases. I remove the only and run everything. And uh, something is failing. The first one is failing. Uh, so it's saying, okay, your implementation is not good enough. It's not like it, it's not uh, satisfying all the scenarios it should cover. Um, and uh, 
the reason is because the first test case I'm passing an empty string. So here, I'm just going to give an another check. If it's empty string, then return empty string. I'm going back to run all my test, test cases again. Oh, three passes. Yay. <laughs> yeah, but it's like very, um, well, it, it's, it's, it's not very clean code because you're basically just checking for each test cases, right? But now, because you're confident that um, your test cases are covering all the three scenarios, so this is a time you can think about to do some refactoring. Um. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, red green refactor. Yeah, this is like th this can be taken as a point for refactoring. So either you refactor at this point, or because for now all three test cases passing, and you have um, all these test, test cases here that you need to cover, you can like do um, more more complicated implementation than later uh, thinking about what you are going to uh, refactor, how how you want to organize your functions. Okay, so. Yeah, anyone else make the third uh, test case pass? You can share your solution. The implementation is like, it could be very different for, for everyone. Anyone? The previous test case. This is one implementation to make the test case pass. Um, another one, like the <laughs> lazy one, is just to say that if the word equals to a return mummy. But then it will fill like uh, some other test cases. Like for example, if you if you do really want to check each um, vowel letter, so you will have five test cases to check A E L U separately. And uh, yeah, basically it will only pass A and the E I O U will fill. So yeah, I'm just taking the next step, just checking whether it's in the in in the in the string. When you're running a um, test, for example, this one, eh? and uh, here I'm saying expect mummify a, which is calling the function. It's th exactly the same that if you have a variable uh, called what mummified. So it's, it's the same as you. Call the function, get the return value, and expect the value to equal some string. And if you want to debug this function, for example, it's just not working the, the, the way that you want it to work, you can console log. Yeah. And I will show there. Yeah, this is um, something that you can use for debugging.
<coughs> yeah, and I just I'm, I'm still like at the state that I have three test cases, and I was uh, just doing a little bit of refactoring. Um, so just now I was checking whether the word is empty string and whether it's uh, uh, it's a vowel, mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm saying <coughs> that if uh, if the word is defined and that it's not noun and it's not empty string, then check whether it's a vowel. And if it is, return mommy. Otherwise, just return whichever you pass to it. And after the refactoring, I'm running the test case and everything passing. It means your refactored code works. So you don't have to worry about whether, like I changed this piece of um, implementation, whether it will break anything. So this is a very nice thing about TDD that it makes sure that what you want is always in the implementation, no matter when and what you do for the implementation. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, any questions about this? If not, I am going to uh, show you like the, f the full implementation of the function and how it looks like in the, in the, in the uh, tests. Mm. All right. So this is uh, some solution I, I did before the workshop. Um, so basically, you can, this have, ha, it has a very clear structure that what is expecting, what is not expecting. Um, yeah. And uh, when you run it, It's very nicely well. It's very nicely documented what what your function is doing, and f for example, you are you are not working on the project or you are not working on this feature anymore, uh, for the maintenance or for someone to pick up what what you have left. It's very clear to them that what I, what what exists, yeah, what existed. Mm, yeah, so. Well, uh, you, if you check out the ma master branch, you have the implementation and also the the tests. So if you haven't f uh, like finished the whole thing, which is quite normal, <laughs> um, you, you can do it later when you go back home. Uh, and let me know if if you have any questions about this. Yeah. Any question about so about this so far? In what detail we should write the unit test? Sorry. In what detail we should write the unit test? In which details? So, uh -huh. like how you come come up with the test cases, right? It it depends on which what what, prob what problem they are trying to solve. Uh, it should be uh, as unit as possible. So one test case is only taking care of one uh, scenario. Um, later, if if something breaks, you know exactly what is breaking. Uh, for example, in 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 this in this practice, I have this scenarios covered. Or uh, alternatively, if I have only, for example, one test case saying that mummify should do something, should mummify the string. It's very abstract and it sounds very complicated, right? It doesn't give the expectation. It does. It doesn't say that. Uh, what input should be given and uh, what I'm expecting to be the output. S so um, the test case, yeah, it, um, the test case should cover the um, functionalities that your function is uh, expected to behave, as well as um, the edge cases that should be covered. For example, in, in this one, the last one, 
if if an uh, undefined input is given, you should think about what the behavior should be. And in this in this case, I'm expecting it to throw an error, and you can do some other error handling to to change the expectations. So yeah, that's another thing about TDD that it forces you to think about the edge cases, and uh, you, your test should cover the edge, edge cases. Um, yeah. Um, so the last one, yeah. So if I'm not giving any argument to mummify function, I should throw error. And the implementation. Well, it's, it's not explicitly stated here. Um, but it's, um, let me see. Yeah, it's it's not explicit. It's the city in the code, but here it will fail because word is a uh, undefined value, and it will throw some error by uh, the framework itself. Or you can handle it to catch some specific error type that you customize yourself. That will be better with a specific specified um, error message. Yeah. Yeah. So uh a short version of a short version of the answer is as as unit as possible and uh, covers the um positive path and the negative path and edge cases yeah all right um i th think that'll be it for today's workshop anything else yay thank you thank you everyone for coming here and joining me yeah and if you have uh, any questions about TDD or you are interested in ThoughtWorks or you are interested in women who code, you can just uh, come to me or drop me an email or just like send me a message on Meetup or something. Yeah. Thank you.